Get it, guys! It is Jar here. Go my name for a second. And we are back with Doki Doki Literature Club! <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna go back into the game. So, let's go. You can, yeah, okay. Alright, then. Sayori! About what happened earlier? Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuki and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen a lot? I mean, often. No, no, no! That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't hate... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I've literally just met them once. I just want your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'll make good friends with you. Phew! You know, Jara, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But my sinuses are acting up. Ugh. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun! <laughs> Loki dying. Oh boy, here we go again. Looks like Siri still hasn't caught into the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what happens. What the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder while I rearrange my desk so I can fix this properly. There we go. Nice pat on the shoulder there. I say that more to myself than to her, but it's easier to you, Sari, as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! <laughs> yeah. Let's do this, I guess. Off to school. Alright, so we have to write another poem. Again, I'm going for Yuri, because I think she's most relatable to me in that sense so I don't really know okay so you're weird I don't get you um bam, 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 existence whirlwind destiny eternity precious I'm sh I don't know I guess a bit of everything will help Fester, sunset, uh, insight, philosophy, cage, defeat, rose. I want to make it like cool as well. Intellectual, treasure, headphones. There's music though. Feather. Um, heartbeat, determination. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting again. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Jara. Yo, sorry, what up, bro? Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thank you. Huh? Th th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Ari? Eh? Huh? What? Why that? All of a sudden. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. <laughs> Sari nervously reaches her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. 
<laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sari. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the classroom. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forgot that you spent all of your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that leaves with only one option. Oh, I give up. I don't, don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh? Yuri suddenly giggles. <laughs> uh? I didn't know she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. I, I was, it was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Jan, let me borrow some money! That's, don't get me involved with involved like that sorry besides you should only buy what you can responsibly afford and frankly after pulling a mischief little stunt like that you your suffering is fairly retribution hmm uh did i just say i didn't mean that at all i i got too absorbed in my book um <laughs> i really like the way you speak your mind yuri it doesn't happen much but it's your fun side of you that's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. <laughs> I did something bad and I have to accept the revolution. <laughs> Retribution. That! <laughs> okay, I'm trying not to, like, go up, bend up and down, but, like, it's getting hard. Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Oh, yes, there is, Yuri. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Zoe knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys that she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But <laughs> you wouldn't have come if you went for the cupcakes, so I had to shoot Nozuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Oh. What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. So he glances around. It, is is this a miracle? Is it because I paid my retribution? Yay! Retribution. It's, it's retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> Nezuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. <laughs> Zuri hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Zuri rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. So good. <laughs> Zuri suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. And my tongue. Get through, uh, you're gonna get though a lot of whatever just one cookie. Nazuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Nazuki. Can I try it? <sighs> Biggest cup of cheeses. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Suri gets out of her seat and goes behind Nozuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Cookie still here, Nozuki reaches up to nudge Suri off her. Oh. Suri suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Nozuki's cookie. Hey! Hey! Did you totally just do that? <laughs> Math falls, Suri tots the race safely. Yuri and I laugh as well. <laughs> jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Huh? Nozuki glasses around. Monica isn't in the club room. <sighs> Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you... Have 
any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me! Yeah, I haven't heard anything either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope... I hope she's okay! Hmm? Of course she's okay! She really just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. <laughs> there you are. We're just talking about you behind your back, you know, as you do. I, I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Uh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend, after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware that my microphone keeps falling over. I wasn't aware you play music as well, Monica. <laughs> I don't really, but I try, I guess. Kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so good! You should play for us sometime, Monica! That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Jara. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. I didn't mean the pressure to break your back and your butt. Jeez. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really love the chance to share it once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Siri's mischief extravaganza. I'm sure Nizuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Siri somehow already finishes her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book and Nizuki disappears into the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something li literature? Related by this. I guess I could always read some of the books Yuri gave me, but I feel a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and I'm not listening in on serious conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna see we're gonna see really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm? Well, we can't give up. The festival's our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is the idea of the literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative mind. Um, that doesn't solve the problem though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with something the most fun thing ever, no one will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they all come, we can do the thing to speak to the creative minds. What's this? Serious? Taking this really seriously. Who, who replaced my friend? I, I, where's Sari? Sari? This isn't Sari. It's rare to hear her deliberate like this. That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? Food always does the trick, honey. Always. Uh, what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! <laughs> good thinking. Nozuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right! Nizuki makes the best cupcakes in the whole entire world! That will work out perfectly! Mm -hmm. That wasn't what you suggested. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy! Mm -hmm. <sighs> Kill me now. Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Siri is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, 
so you can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ah! Oh my eyes find Sayori's face filled my vision, no kidding. I nearly fell out of my chair. <laughs> sorry! Wait, actually I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for falling asleep like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know? You need to get used to it. Don't say that aloud, jeez. Shush, 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 shush. I glance over my shoulder to see Monica ahead. It's true, though. Yeah, I know. That's why I watch it in study time. I know, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, so I worry. Thank you. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Uh, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret! I knew it. Come on! Not a fair question. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Can't even do that. Look, Sarah, it's written all over your face. Sleep deprived. Teenage student in high school. Eh? Uh? Sarah so glasses around herself. How is it written all over me? Did I get a tattoo without me remembering? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all over here. <laughs> I run my fingertips down the side of Sarah's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this thing. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your body isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I try to wrap it off the stain with my finger. But, but no one would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. <laughs> you meanie. And don't you even and don't you even keep your blazing buttoned up? Seriously, Sari, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? What? Really? That was mean. Jeez, <laughs> that's super mean. Sorry, but you'll see me later. I started to button her blazer from the button. Why am I buttoning up her blazer for her? She can do it herself. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Uh, this is awkward. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it was to have a friend who does these kind of things. Uh, don't say that. You made me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this, aren't you? Uh, no. I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The bomb might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to... Fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing ever fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. Why are you smiling about it? It means my boobs have grown bigger again. Don't say that out loud. That's not something to say out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange that to see Sari's bags are buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it all. So Sari has to unbutton her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. <laughs> Sari puts her arm out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend. Right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't... Even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things, please. Jeez, it's not like I just started saying it. Eh? Uh, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, let's just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Or if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. Deal. It's a deal. 
I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. Why is my character so hands on? So maybe we should come. Maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, but I was just joking this time. Man, it's impossible to tell you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Jared, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, so. I failed to sound enthusiastic. Rosie still trots away to receive her poem. Retrieve her poem. Who do you show the poem to first? Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty good, Jara. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing skills yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how different everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. You know, those crank gears. That little gizmo of a gear. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your readers to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. Let's do. Uh, it's certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course, bring it here. Is that the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and Tilly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night, while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuffling of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendency as a wandering human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequence, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hunger, curious, the raccoon, and urge, couldn't read for a second. The moon incented in its phase and reflected that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistened in the eye of the raccoon friend. I sliced the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon became excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto a newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon became hungry and more and more frequent, so her bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic paddling condition. I slice the bread and I feel myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. You can see that. I think the metaphor is the raccoon? It's a little more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't imagine, begin to imagine what this poem is about. I think I can. I don't know. I feel like something, maybe the knife is more, or a knife blood. Maybe killing? That's what I'm getting. And like the raccoon's the demon in her. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the palm as a canvas to express a vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah. If I take it face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think some think that different people can relate to in their own way. I know to express that the way it feels to me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But, but, but because they're embarrassing and maybe legal, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Jara? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little secret like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individually. Even if, even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I probably would hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Who was next? That's to Monica. Hi again, Jara. How's the writing going? 
alright, I guess. I mean, it's not too bad. I wrote it this morning. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote your poem for the day? Sure, here you go. Give my poem to Monica. Hmm. Hello? Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sari would like. Is that so? You and Sarah are really good friends, right? It would be surprised if I had some sort of things in common. Oh, well, it's a long story. We're maybe good friends, but Sari and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. Sounds like you two really care about each other as well. Even if you shot in a different way, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading the poem. Hmm. You sure really... You sure you're not reading into this too much? <sighs> it could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri, don't I? But in any case, Suri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell she likes to explore with emotions like happiness and sadness. <coughs> Who knew that someone's so happy would enjoy sad things as well? Everyone ever. Basically. Oh, she needs to sneeze. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do. Cool, let's take a look. Save me. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Fashioning, expanding, piercing. An endless catastrophe of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violence, grateful waveforms, squeaking... Screeching and piercing, sighing, cos and tan, like playing a chalkboard on a turban, like a playing of vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Load me. Hmm. It's even more extra than your last one. Huh? Yes, it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you do not like it. I never said that. Just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. I chose where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really sure makes you feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's so hard to tell me what it's about though. <sighs> Sometimes asking what a poem's about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression on a face or a conversation with a reader. So putting it in a way not even a poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know what might change your mind. When something unexpected might happen. Wait, is this a tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? You're talking about the game. I'm uncomfortable now. You're sentient. You know what's going on, don't you? <laughs> That's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. Okay, she knows what's going on. Hmm. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Jara! <laughs> huh? I love it! <laughs> Especially after yesterday's poem. Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really! I want to put this on my wall! <laughs> Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. Did you drink too much tea again? I'm not a good writer after all. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. 
Jesus. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you just don't like it because I wrote it? <laughs> well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of people you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a jar poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. <laughs> Sarah has to sheet to her chest. You're so weird, Sarah. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems. That they're good or bad. But that's just why. But that's. But that's. But that's why I just go by my heart. <laughs> if I can read a sentence. Oh, die. If it makes it feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure exactly how it works. And again, I guess the thing feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, I guess. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least give uh, some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. <laughs> You're right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up hurting, getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bitter sweet. Sweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Siori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad palm can help give that rain cloud a little hug. And it makes a nice, happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Po poetic. Po poetic. Hmm, really? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Jara. I should go write them down then. <laughs> you can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like that a lid of a jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. That's weird. Little balls of sunshine all rub together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in the bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in the bottle all in a row. My collection made me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my finger goes, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time lapsed. My empty shelf. You could use some more. My friends thought my lot front door. My friends looked through my lock through my locked front foot door. Finally all done, I opened up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want the bottles that much? I frantically pull them off from the shelves, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile beneath my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts shatter in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay. Damn, that was good. Siri, did, did you really write this? I can finish soon. Why? That little interruption was from Mama J. Sorry, she was asking me a question. Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. 
Monica told me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is not it, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> I feel like it was meant to express myself this was. It even helped me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You're getting pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm going to keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. So always has a habit of getting assessed for something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those things. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be... The... I didn't see the word. Nazuki. Huh. Well, there's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew? What? Uh, well, anything that is on train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait a minute, was that a compliment? Oh my god, did he just give me a compliment? Oh my god. Like, what do I do? I'm starting to freak out and stress now. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Glad to see someone recognize my experience. <laughs> well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's... Uh... Something tells me no... Nozuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sari's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess it's because you were friends for her for so long, you might have the same wavelength. But you never really shot me as her type. Sari has a type, all of a sudden. Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, uh, Fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging you around like dead weight. Um, that was a little unnecessary, Nazuki, geez. But I think of it like this. If it weren't for me, she'd probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever, it's just, it, it don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem here. <laughs> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggling, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I hear her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders, and that's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy tried to help me, and I took and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands were probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it, if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross, she's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Not bad, right? Quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, this message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with simple energies and help it, people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree with the subject of poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's not everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can't be about anything. I mean, it's easy to be related to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as it's not hurting them and makes them any happier? I think people really need to earn the respect of others like weird things. <sighs> <coughs> That's funny. You wrote about something similar today. Hmm? Did you say, y Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to yours. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I doubt that she has some sort of weird hobby. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not, I, you know, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Because he gets trouble finding words. Uh, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. I feel insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always say people are making people insecure. And Yuri makes me feel insecure yesterday. By the way, you put it in so it sounds like it is. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style was really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless it's a good message to take away from it. They like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a poem. Ooh, hiccups. 
I'm gonna write a good poem for you tomorrow. So look forward to it. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so everyone could sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. <laughs> uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we're putting together anything good in the past few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparation. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sonia has been working on posters, and I have designed some pamphlets. We can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P p p p uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So he's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> so he, who's been colouring in posters holds up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't really stop putting those posters up, did you? Oh, uh, well, I did. Did you really think it's a bad of an item of them? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't set up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with, Nat with Natsuki for once. I could never in my life do something like this. Imagine it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nozuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot for them to ask to recite their poem out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. Mm. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event, if we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to do. And everyone who will show up is all, literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reactions that, those reasons why we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share those with others? To inspire them to find some same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you'll do. I know we'll all do. And if it, what if it takes to stand in front of a room for two minutes and recite a poem? Then I know you can do it. Hmm. Hmm. Nozuki and Yuri remain silent. Suri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think Suri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least you could do is to help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, maybe, but, but, maybe. Mm -hmm. Looks like Nozuki doesn't have any arguments left. Mm, okay, fine. I guess we should just have to get over and with. Alright! Thanks, Nozuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm. Yuri degenerated the glasses around everyone else. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! <laughs> This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of your own. We're going to practice writing them in front of each other. No, no, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, then how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off helping everyone a little bit, make everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has started in her mind. She then stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before or is it simply natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Suri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the reciting. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to just set a good example. Are you ready to be next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches the sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. 
Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the poem. This this poem is called... You anxiously glances at each other. You can do it, Sayori! <laughs> it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice, lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her book. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of fierce and confident woman. I want to be described like that. Fierce and confident woman. This poem is full of twists and turns in its structure and she is enthused with perfect timing. This must be a red glimpse into the whirlwind fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered ev even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. <laughs> Everyone joins me afterwards which gives Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the palm to her chest and rests back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Mm. Yuri looks down as if to cut. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Say so hops on the chair, chiefly and walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Yuri, <laughs> it's a lot harder than I thought. How'd you guys do it so easy? Uh... Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it will come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Zeri begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like the story is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Zeri's voice almost gave it a whole new meaning. Maybe it was what Siri meant when she said that she liked my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply, though, into someone I thought I knew. Though, Siri finishes and we applaud. I did it! <laughs> good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Jara liked it. I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> what does that even mean? It came out nice, Sayori. The atmosphere of this poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the old poem wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of people. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Nozuki? Hmm. They've been looking for poor Jara. It's not like I can compare you guys to anyone. Might as well let Jara let everyone stand a little before I might have to. Zuki! It's fine, it's fine. I'm used to this shit. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection to, of what to read. I just have to go with the one I wrote today. I stand up in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive the applause. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry. It's not about that. I think it's less about your abilities and more about the lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll prove over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright, then. That just leaves Nizuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Nizuki regretfully gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, this poem's called Jump. Let me see you a jump. Mizuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she is still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhyme and a rhythm to it. It's in Mizuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if given life to the poem. Nozuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Is it for you to say, you better not make me do that again? Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite the poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of people will be way easier. I can put whatever face I want for the other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Nozuki. 
I think it'd be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it works, so... Well, in any case. You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though. It might be hard, but I hope that you will have the idea of what it's like now. Make sure to pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll make a pamphlet, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's all it is for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write a poem for tomorrow as well. I've been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. <laughs> I can do this. 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 All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Asteria and Monica, but I'll do my best for the sake of the club and impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Siri? Yep. Look at you two. Oh, let's go home to go like that. It's kind of adorable. <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make it such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Jerry. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's just go home. I walk home with Sarah once more. Even though it's only a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siri is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siri. Hmm? Sorry, I was spacing out. <laughs> no wonder. Uh, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Zoe fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Uh, well... I want to walk Yuri home, but I would still it's still an honor thing to walk Sayori home. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, but, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in club every day. Besides, you always really seem to like going home together with me. I wouldn't just ruin it for that. You're so silly. You're so silly, Jara. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it even if she wanted so. Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I can't... I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what was the point in speculating something that was never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of weird thinking Siri cares so much for me. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? I'm going to just save it here. And that's where we're going to end today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. So, so far we know that maybe Monica knows what's going on. She knows she's in a game? I don't know. Because <coughs> her poem said load me. And she seemed, her tip was about the game. So, I think she knows a bit more than she's letting on. I don't know. Anyway. Joe out says in the next video, Sarah cast them out and let's read them for face cast a hug. Bye bye. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. See you guys. Yes.